All right. Hey, we are uh, we're up here at Esperanto Point. You know, we've we've done a few videos up here before. Um, I have drawn a rifle hunt and a muzzleload hunt for this this management area. Uh, if y'all are not familiar with Esperanto Point, it is a different type of woods. I mean, it's a lot of sandy soil. We're actually up here at the Bayou Campground. Um, waiting for for Mike to show up but um, sandy soil different terrain um, there's some trees to climb in certain areas but then there's some areas there's you know you just either gonna have to hunt on the ground or really be particular about where you're gonna climb at but uh, different type of woods it's not like Blackwater but we're gonna scout this out we got a uh, like I said, the permit for later in this year for a gun hunt, a muzzleload hunt, so we're not going to bow hunt in here. And so uh, if we're bow hunting in here, I'd have done scouted this out, but, you know, we still have a couple more months for those those two seasons. So we're going to scout it out right now. It's in October, and archery season actually opens up at the end of October up here in Zone D of the Panhandle of Florida. But we're, uh, like I said, we're not archery hunting in here. So that's why I'm scouting this out just a little bit later. And plus... It's just a little bit cooler than it would be in August right now. But anyhow, ain't it beautiful? Ain't it beautiful out here? So waiting for Mike. Mike will be here in a little bit. And we're going to check out a couple spots and uh, show you all what we're looking at. This will be my last scouting video for this season. But then again, do we ever stop scouting? Who knows? I don't. Anyhow, if you don't know me, my name's Chuck Barrison, and this is Public Land Outdoors. All right, hey, like I said earlier, we're just gonna check out a couple of areas. Um, how do we scout? I mean, there's so many different ways that you can scout. I mean, I've talked about this before. You can go on uh, uh, Google Maps, and look at different terrain features, and then go from there. Um, and I've done that in this place here. But also, here's just an easy way of doing it. If you're new to, to deer hunting, and you wanna check out a, a new area, but you know there's just so much woods out there how do you pinpoint where the deer are at in these woods or where they're traveling or where they're going so uh, what we're doing is we're gonna walk down this road simple very easy walk down the road and you can see look down this road you can see the amount of uh, traffic of just critters going up and down the road we saw an old bear track up there it was kind of faint um, a lot of a lot of deer, a lot of deer going up and down this road. And there's a few hogs going up and down this road. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk this road all the way down and we're gonna make mental notes. I mean, we're seeing a lot of traffic going north and south. This road runs north and south. I kinda wanna find traffic that's heading east to west because that would tell me that they're coming and going in and out of this thing. So we're gonna go down here and look for, for that kind of traffic. But it's a good looking area. Yeah, all right, y'all stick with us.
All right, one thing if y'all don't know about Escarano Point, there's hogs up here. There's a lot of everything up here. There's hogs, bear, deer, coyotes, bobcat, critters. But as you can see, this we get to check out this this area right here where they have rooted up. The hogs have rooted it up. The thing is, I mean, it's nothing really that fresh because the water's clear. If you look at it. The water's really clear. They haven't like been in here over last night or yesterday at that. But you can tell they're in here. This is the same area that I, when I hunted that last time, that I uh, had that little, the little cow horn spike walk down this thing. This is a good sign. So we're not only hunting deer, we're hunting hogs. If we see a hog, we'll shoot it. That's a good sign. Y'all, we gotta do this. This is just a good area. I've, I've hunted this a couple years ago, had that one deer, but this, I mean, even back then there was a bunch of, uh, a bunch of hog sign on, even though I didn't see any hog sign. And I can tell you right now, I'm standing here and I'm looking at this trail coming down here going right behind you back that way and then I actually I look and I'll be damned it's not really a defined trail but you can tell something has moved through there so it's a good possibility that not only we have a good north and south this may be a good crossing trail where they they come through this is a good spot so the thing is this I mean we're hunting this during gun season so Got to make sure the wind's right. To be honest with you, the wind could be out of the out of the east, or it could be out of the west. And if you're off the trail, you can actually get away with a north wind or a south wind if you're off of the trail. If they're using this trail, so, I mean, there's some trees up here. You can see back up here behind me to my right, off to the side. We can climb up that. Hell, there's a big old pine down there. We're hunting this with a rifle, so I mean, this is an easy rifle shot if something's down here. Um, there's a couple of trees here. Like I said, Esperanto, sometimes some of these areas, they just don't have any trees to climb. You're either gonna have to hunt off the ground or really, uh, mosquitoes, really be, you know, think how you're gonna hunt it. But heck, yeah, you can sit in that big old pine tree down there. You see it way down there? Climb up that. But anyhow, look at that. Good trail. Hogs are using it. I guarantee you deer are using it. No telling what's coming through here. This will be something we're going to look at. We'll probably mark a spot. Stick with us. Alright. Um, so this is what we're going to do. This is really a a good travel area with some benefits all right the benefits are um, if you kind of look behind me scattered through these these pines you got some oaks and we know they're dropping acres I mean I'm not gonna walk over there and go look but I know I've been I've been looking at some of the other oaks around here but there's oaks right here that are definitely dropping acres and then as you pan down over here and look you can see we got a really good trail coming down this thing so we know that it's a good travel route we know that the, the deer the hogs the critters are moving up and down this trail uh, the thing to, to figure out what time of the day are they moving and what direction are they coming from so <clears throat> that's that's gonna be the the one that we're gonna have to work on so the deer coming they could be working down this trail they peel off the trail they go to these oaks feed a little bit maybe browse on some of the browse area right through here a lot of green in here and they come back and they hit the trail and they work their way back down and as if you look there's there's more oaks off over here they could they actually they can just meander through the woods and hit from oak tree to oak tree and then peel back to the trail and there's more oaks down there so 
I like to think of this, and I've said this before, I like to think of this as you going to work. I'm going to tell you what, when I go to work, I have a certain oak tree I stop by just about every morning, every other morning. If somebody wanted to pattern me, they could do that. I stop by the old Tom Thumb, get me a drink, get me a snack before I go to work, and I go on to work. I peel off my trail, pull in the parking lot, grab something to eat, get back on the trail and go. Same thing with the deer. They're just moving through here. This is their travel route. As you can tell, it's a well-worn trail. It's beat down. They're working this trail. They peel off, stop off at the Tom Thumb, go on through there a little bit, come back out on the road, and make their way back to wherever they're heading. Either most likely in the morning, they're probably bedding. In the evening, they could be coming from the bed. And, and I'm gonna assume bedding is south. I wanna say that the critters, I'm hoping that I'm right, that the critters are coming from the north and they're heading south. But either way, I, we'll figure it out. But that's just a really good trail. So that's just something to think about. I mean, you know, we're, we're gonna try this out. We're gonna mark it down there. There's more oak trees down there. There's a few up here, but there's more oak trees down there. So we're gonna mark that, that pine tree that's right on the end of this, on the edge of this trail. And we're gonna come in through the back door. We're, we don't wanna walk in on this trail because, I mean, deer can be hanging out, having a party on the trail. We don't wanna come in early in the morning and spook them off the trail that we're hunting. So we're gonna go in on the back side of it, come down, there's an old road back there. And we'll come down and then slip through about maybe a hundred, yards of woods come through the back door slip up the tree be nice and quiet so that's what we're going to do y'all stick with us we're going to go mark the trail with red bright eyes so if somebody's at night and they see red bright eyes they may get scared like, oh. either way y'all stick with us <laughs> Check out this track until that deer's been running. If you look, there's that one there. His dew claws are in the ground. It keeps on running down. So, here's something I'm going to share with you. It's not necessarily a secret because you know, deer have had this, this little gland you know, their whole life. But, you know, I think about hunting when I was a kid, and there was so much stuff that we didn't know as a kid that we know now. I mean, I can tell you what, somebody that doesn't know anything about deer hunting just does a little bit of research and information, look on the, on the computer and all that, they can really learn a lot. You know, there's more we know more about, we know more about deer than we did 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 35 plus years, that's when I started doing it. So, here's my thing about tracks, hoof prints. Deer actually have an interdigital gland in there. And when a deer walks, they emit a little bit of that gland out. So, and they use it to trail other deer, pretty much. So here's the thing, a few years back, they, that was one of the scents that got out on the market, you know, a deer scent, it was the interdigital gland. And everybody thought, hey, yeah, cool, I can put this gland out and put the deer where I want it to walk. What you don't realize, what some people didn't realize, is when this deer walks, he only emits, or she only emits, so much of that scent when she steps. 
And what they do is, the next deer, so she's walking, and she emits the scent. So when the next deer comes, and she may, that next deer may be half an hour down the, the road, whatever, and comes in, or maybe 20 minutes, whatever. The next deer comes, and as she's walking down the same trail that the previous deer did, she gradually drops her head, and you've probably seen the deer do that. Drop her head, catch the scent. Drop her head, catch the scent, and keep working. And they just, you know, they do a little tail wag that tells everything is fine. You know, oh, the deer's calm, and he's moving down. The, uh, the thing you gotta, realize with that inner digital gland on the deer is uh, when the deer is spooked or when this deer is running like this it emits more of that scent out onto the ground so when the next deer comes by and it's walking and it's smelling everything's cool all of a sudden it drops its head and it's like what the heck it smells more gland out because maybe the previous deer was spooked by another hunter, a coyote, whatever. So it goes on full alert. So you're like, oh, deer's like, what the heck? So the deer's either going to start blowing, stomping, whatever, or just get the heck out of Dodge. So here's the question. You know, I was talking to Mike about this. How do you use that inner digital scent? In my opinion, you don't. You don't, I wouldn't use it because how do you know how much to put on the ground without alerting the deer? So, how, but how do you use the knowledge of that gland when you're hunting? And so here's your knowledge. So if you're sitting in the tree, we're sitting in this tree and we see a couple of does walking by and we know that we're hunting a particular buck or whatever and a couple of does walk by and either the deer catches your movement or catches your scent or whatever and spooks and so when it spooks it bolts right there it spooks and hauls butt well guess what it did it left a signpost for the next deer to know that that spot right there emergency emergency something was wrong so you got to think so now here comes the buck and he's coming to that point where you just spooked that deer so you either got to be ready to stop that deer before he gets to the point because remember where you spooked the deer or when he comes to that point, he may stop and he may give you the opportunity to shoot, but he may bolt immediately too, especially if he's a wise old deer. He smells that and he's like, holy crap, he hauls butt and you don't get the shot. So you got to think about that. So how do you use that in a digital gland? You use it thinking the deer's using it to mark a trail for the next deer. So if the deer spooks, remember where it spooked at because the next deer is going to smell it too. Just a little redneck tip. How do you like that, huh? Don't get that very often. Either way, we're going to go to another spot, check it out, maybe mark it up, get ready for, I don't know, maybe a third spot, we'll see. I'll stick with this it. is the second area that we we're looking at. We actually just walked this little fire break road all the way back in here. You smell that mud, man, it stinks, it feels nasty. Just stuff's been wet for years, little tadpoles, whatever. I don't think those are tadpoles, those are like little minnows. Um, I ain't gonna lie to you, we didn't really, I mean there's some, there's some animals in here, there's some deer moving through here, I didn't really see any hog sign, uh, even though this at one time looks like it could have been a waller, but still, we started this video over at the Bayou Campground, now we're on the, the north side, and this behind, behind y'all is I believe Catfish Basin, it's beautiful. But anyhow, we're gonna we're gonna pretty much end it right here. I think we, we shared enough with you without telling you exactly where we're at, except for here. You know we're at Catfish Basin. But uh, hopefully, hopefully it'll turn out to be a good season. Like I said, we're gonna be hunting this when it's a lot colder, because right now uh, the temperature is probably close to 80 right now. <clears throat> it was about 60 something when we first got out here. But it's probably closer to 80. But when we hunt out here, hopefully it's freezing. They ain't gonna lie to you because the mosquitoes, yellow flies, snow seams won't be as bad. But still beautiful. Still beautiful. Hey, you get an opportunity. I, I really hate asking this because I feel like I have a pretty loyal subscriber base. I feel like the people that actually subscribe to the channel, they subscribe to it because they like it. There's good information there. And so if you just happen to come across this video, hey, subscribe and give it one of these things, these thumbs up deals, you know. I mean, that's up to you. I mean, I, I figured if you like it, you'll do it. If you don't like it, you won't. But 
if you do subs you know if you do like it subscribe and do me a favor spread the news like I said before there's a redneck with a cameraman now that's filming videos in Northwest Florida so either way all right y'all we're gonna head back to the truck to get something to drink y'all take care see you next time Thank you.